Well, welcome back. Let's take a look at futures this morning. We had a mixed showing. Dow Industrials up 12. Nasdaq is down 20. And the S&P up by just a point. And we want to take a look at the price of oil. We are looking at spiking prices here. Uh, take a look. The price of crude oil now at $93.21 a barrel. And that's down after the price hit the highest in 13 months yesterday. Uh, tight supply concerns the issue here. Joining me right now is LPL Financial Chief Technical Strategist Adam Turnquist. Adam, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Your reaction hey, morning, to what we're seeing in oil and its relation to the inflation numbers that we're going to be watching in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, certainly not what the Fed wants to see here with crude oil breaking out. You know, over the last few weeks, we've seen crude clear resistance at $83. Now we're getting into the $90 plus a barrel, seeing resistance set up here for 90, right around 97. If we start clearing that, we're talking triple digit oil, maybe even going back and retesting those 2022 highs in the 125 to 130 camp. Of course, as you mentioned, it's all about supply right now. You have OPEC plus cutting their production with the Saudis extending those production cuts into December. Russia also reducing their exports. And then even in the U.S., you can see the stockpile drawdowns here hitting year to date lows. So it's a pretty supply driven market. We are seeing a little bit more demand as well with China importing near record levels back in August. So. Certainly uh, an improving backdrop for crude oil. It looks like, for now, the path of least resistance remains higher. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget that we don't have a lot of wiggle room in the United States. Joe Biden sold off so much oil uh, from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, uh, forcing this administration now to have to fill it up at 90 plus dollar a barrel. And it's undermining any efforts to take down inflation. We've got more economic data out this week. We've got the final read of second quarter GDP out this morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, Adam. Are you expecting this economy to show slowdown. The estimate still calls for growth of 2.1% for the second quarter. That's going to be the final read. It's hard to bet against this resilience theme with the U.S. economy right now. And that's something the Fed talked about at their FOMC meeting last week. It's really a, a better than expected economic situation in the U.S. Of course, now that's starting to lift longer duration Treasury yields working against the market. So, I think for today's GDP report, not expecting any big surprises. Of course, tomorrow we're going to get that PCE data. That's going to be a big one for this week's economic calendar. And of course, that that oil oil market right now is certainly weighing on that inflation outlook. Yeah, and that's the, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this uh, oil spike is undermining these efforts to take down inflation. Uh, you mentioned the August PCE report out tomorrow morning. Economists are expecting prices to be up two tenths of a percent month over month and up three point nine percent year over year. Tiana, jump in here as we look at more inflation data, which is uh, elevated. Yeah, so we see the Fed and futures markets both pushing back that expected first cut to the back half of next year. But there's openness to still one more rate hike. You know, the, we've seen the Fed board split now on whether or not we should have another rate hike coming in through this year. We're getting bad news just both on CPI and PCE. What should we be looking at in the PCE data tomorrow to expect a sooner than later rate hike, getting another one this year? And what should we be looking at if there's a spread between core and head that continues to grow? We'll be looking at the super core inflation. So core services, X housing, that's one that Fed's been talking about a lot to see if that continues to come down. And then just the overall um, trend in inflation. We had the Fed talk about they want to see six months of an improving inflation backdrop with PCE. So we'll see if we get a, a lower than expected print tomorrow. I think that would be welcomed by the market. We're pretty oversold going into this event tomorrow. So we'll see if we get any, I think any type of downside in inflation would be a catalyst for a potential relief rally here off some of these oversold levels. Well, the other issue, Mark Tepper, jump in here because we're also watching interest rates and you've got a spike in the 10 year and the two year. And that's undermining any ability for people to, you know, get back into the housing market, pay their bills and take down their debt because rates are at the highest levels in what, 10, they, 15 years? Yeah, the highest level in 10 to 15 years. And Jamie Dimon earlier this week says there's a possibility they go to 7 percent. We're yeah. at five that's and a half percent right now. That's another six hikes. Yeah. The market is only pricing in, to your point, Tiana, half a hike, half an additional hike yes. right now, which probably isn't going to cut it, especially as you look forward to December. Um, last December, oil average, WTI average, $78 a barrel. 
Right now it's 93. That's $15 more. That's 19% more. All of a sudden, oil becomes additive to CPI. Yeah. Big time. 10 years up, about three basis points right now. Adam, good to get your take on all of that. Thank you, sir.